Hi everyone, uh, this is Dr. Zahira. Welcome back to the lectures on pediatric dentistry. So today's lecture is part two series of the lecture which was done previously that is diagnosis and treatment planning for a child patient. So the previous lecture was covered by Dr. Fawaz. So the part two will be covered by me. So moving on to the lecture. So the internet learning outcomes that the, at the end of the lecture you will be able to plan treatment for the patient and referral letter writing and also we will be learning about the radiographic techniques for a child patient. So moving on to the treatment planning. So the treatment planning has been divided into the various phases which we use in the pediatric dentistry department. Uh, which is divided into the emergency phase, the behavior modification phase, preventive phase, the restorative and the endodontic phase, the surgical phase, orthodontic phase and the recall and maintenance. So we will be learning in details in the subsequent slides. In the emergency phase, uh, we attend the patient's immediate needs which may be physical or em uh, emotional so something like relieving the pain of the related to the tooth or if there is any traumatic injury or uh, prescribing any medications like uh, antibiotic analgesics etc so in the emergency phase we have the management of trauma so a patient who comes with a history of trauma uh, uh, emergency phase is done so the immediate treatment is required by the patient any endodontic treatment uh, of painful teeth so uh, if a tooth if a patient comes with a painful tooth and um, it needs endodontic treatment so emergency access cavity is done so to relieve the pain of the patient so uh, a patient who has a history of uh, medical diseases um, the conditions the medical condition needs to be stabilized before any dental treatment uh, starts so uh, before we start the dental treatment uh, for a medical condition the patient uh, needs to be referred to the medical specialist or the family physician uh, to take uh, uh, for the, to take any advice before any uh, dental procedures so, uh, like uh, any prophylactic medication that needs to be given to the patient before treatment of by uh, before dental treatment like uh, subacute bacterial endocarditis the patient needs antibiotic treatment before the uh, commencement of the uh, dental treatment so if a patient who comes with a uh, abscess so that needs emergency um, treatment like incision and drainage this again relieves pain of the uh, pain uh, associated with the tooth and the prescription of medications of acute conditions so the con acute conditions like if the patient has uh, any uh, abscess related to the tooth history of pain related to the tooth that again needs prescription of medications like antibiotics and analgesics that needs to be uh, uh, or anxiolytics that needs to be um, prescribed to the patients for the relief of symptoms next moving on to the uh, behavior modification phase in in this behavior modification phase we generally modify the behavior of a child who is uh, coming to a dentist or his first dental visit and modified into such a way so that the patient cooperates in the dental treatment which will be done in future so uh, there are various steps for it so pre-appointment letter is given to the parents um, then after which uh, the introductory visit is done by the patient and the parents so this introductory visit generally help the child in understanding and getting used to the dental environment and getting to know uh, the dentist along with the dental assistant and uh, because gen children are uh, very anxious about the new place so uh, this is to avoid their changes or to uh, this will help 
in better behavior in the child during the dental treatment even modeling will help in the uh, behavior modification of the child modeling like uh, if um, an older sibling is there then uh, the elder older sibling can mod um, can act as a modeling for the child who is the younger sibling for the treatment of whom the parents have come and next is the communication communication is an important factor the communication may be verbal or non verbal communication this again helps in better bonding of the child with the dentist and hence uh, modifies the behavior of the child in the further appointments next we have the preventive phase and in the preventive phase the first thing that we do is the oral prophylaxis uh, oral prophylaxis uh, removes the food debris uh, which are the causative factor for the development of dental caries next is the topical fluoride application so topical fluoride uh, application uh, is uh, also done in the preventive phase next we have the pit and fissure sealant pit and fissure sealants is applied to either primary or the permanent dentition uh, especially the mm, pits and uh, tooth with pits and fissures which are susceptible uh, for development of dental caries and diet counseling so diet counseling is done to modify the uh, diet of the child from a, a diet which is a cariogenic diet to a non cariogenic or reduced amount of cariogenic uh, diet and the patient education and motivation is Im an important factor uh, along with the giving of oral hygiene instruction so uh, in the preventive phase especially with children the, the patient education the uh, education uh, and motivation is required uh, every appointment uh, the patient is motivated to brush in a specified way uh, so that the child follows a good preventive measure the next phase is the restorative and endodontic phase so in the restorative phase any tooth which is carious and can be restored is restored with either gic or composites so um, uh, or a tooth color restorative material then in the endodontic phase um, endodontic treatment of a tooth which is deep having deep carious lesions are treated with endodontic treatment so in the endodontic treatment we have for the primary teeth is pulpotomy or pulpectomy or for the mixed dentition or for the permanent dentition we have rct or root canal treatment that can be done for the tooth next we have the surgical phase in the surgical phase we have either extraction of the grossly decayed teeth uh, uh, or a tooth which is uh, buccally erupting or lingually erupting or retained primary uh, tooth is uh, extracted in the surgical phase um, then phrenectomy if there is high phrenal attachment that again uh, phrenectomy is done then the surgical management of any cystic lesions so any cystic lesions which are associated with any tooth or uh, um, which are present in the oral cavity then surgical excision of the cystic lesion is done in the surgical phase next we move on to the orthodontic phase so orthodontic phase plays a very important role um, especially in uh, cases of children uh, and uh, in the mixed dentition phase because that is the time when the, there is a dynamic change that occurs in the oral cavity so in, uh, we have the preventive orthodontic treatment that we do that is um, uh, by giving space maintainers or interceptive orthodontics um, for cases like any habit breaking appliances or any developing crossbite uh that correction that we do it comes under the interceptive ortho uh, the orthodontics while the preventive is the application of um, giving space maintainers to maintain the space which is uh, there but may close or may 
because of the uh, absence of teeth so here in the first picture what you see is a space maintainer that has been given to retain the space which is uh, af available after the extraction of the primary tooth so that the permanent tooth erupts without any uh, problem while the second picture what you see here is a habit breaking uh, appliance which is given to the patient next we have the recall and maintenance in the recall and maintenance uh, there is uh, we recall the patient every uh, six months three to six months six to twelve months a yearly basis based on the patient's oral uh, hygiene and the oral health so if a child who has low caries index we Pref we would prefer calling the child every 6 to 12 months or yearly ones but a child with high caries index the child should be called every 3 to 6 months for the caries uh, surveillance so evaluation is very effective for the uh, to, to check the effectiveness of the preventive program preventive program like your topical fluorides or the um, oral prophylaxis or your pit and fissure sealants then we need to uh, check for the new caries basically in a uh, child um, we call every three to six months or a year, uh, six to twelve months to review the child for if there is occurrence of any new caries caries lesions then evaluation of restorative care then you check the restorations that have pre been previously uh, rest the tooth which has been previously restored so the uh, restorations are evaluated to check if there is any uh, break in the restoration or um, uh, in break in the restoration and the evaluation of the tooth guidance treatment so evaluate uh, the tooth eruption sequence so that that uh, so that there is no crossbite or any type of a malocclusion that might occur so it is better to treat the tooth uh, malocclusion when they are in the developing stage instead of when the tooth has already come into occlusion so now moving on to the referral letter so the reason for a referral letter uh, is to is to a specialist or to a hospital dental uh, practitioner so uh, a referral letter or the patient is referred to a, a specialist or a uh, hospital dental practitioner if the patient is associ uh, associated with any systemic conditions uh, that require uh, appropriate referral or does require a dental treatment at a special center so a uh, hospital dental practitioner is equipped well so it is better um, to refer a patient which is beyond the scope of the um, of your dental clinic so it is better to refer to the uh, refer a patient to the dental, hospital dental practitioner uh, in complex cases that require referral assisting with recognition of the personal limitations so um, if it's a complex case or multi uh, in our case we have multi multiple uh, caries lesion or it is a early childhood caries where the child is uncooperative and uh, the treatment management is difficult and the patient has to come uh, multiple times which is not feasible by the parent also so in such cases we uh, refer the patient to the hospital dental practitioner who uses um, uh, dif different behavior techniques uh, the pharmacological behavior management techniques for uh, doing the uh, you know, the uh, treatment or uh, we also refer the uh, child to a specialist or a hospital dental practitioner based on the behavior of the child so a child who is not cooperative even after multiple visits to the dentist so in such patients uh, is uh, such patients we refer to a hospital dental practitioner um, uh, uh, after which the dental treatment would be done in uh, in either uh, conscious sedation or um, general anesthesia and 
uh, where you don't need the patient's behavior uh, uh, to treat the patient so how should a uh, uh, or what all should a uh, referral letter include so the uh, important things that should be included in the referral letter is the patient's uh, information so the patient information like the name uh, the ic number uh, the address of the patient the date of birth and gender and a patient uh, record number where it exists so the patient record number has to also be uh, uh, included in the referral letter uh, the practitioner details any referral details that may be needs to be uh, uh, added uh, the special requirements the history of the patient uh, who has come to treatment uh, any examination findings any findings that you see in the oral cavity of the child that needs to be also included in the uh, referral letter any investigation and results uh, which were obtained so any investigations like a radiograph if it is taken that can also be uh, included in the referral uh, letter along with the results any medication that has been uh, uh, prescribed or the patient is on any medication or and medical devices that again should be included in the referral letter so the allergies and adverse reactions to any drugs needs to be included in the referral letter and safety alerts and legal information that needs to be included so here we have a sample of the referral letter that includes uh, the person or the place we are referring to uh, uh, then we have the department we are referring to the patient's name the ic number the date the age of the patient the gender of the patient reference number the history other general physical examination that is done on the patient the time at which the patient has been referred the diagnosis that has been done the results of any inve investigation that has been done uh, the treatment that is done or needs to be uh, provided and the purpose of referral of the patient to the concerned person So this is an example of a referral letter that we use in pediatric dentistry. Uh, so the, the previous sample which I have showed you uh, is a similar one, but in this the uh, the it's a filled letter. So this is what which is sent to the uh, the um, hospital dentist for him to uh, do the subsequent treatment that the patient needs. So now we are moving on to the radiographic techniques for a child patient. So as you know, it is very difficult for us as dentists to obtain a radiograph for a child uh, compared to that of an adult uh, because a child is not able to sit stable and not understand the need uh, and is relatively scared of the dental environment. So uh, how do we manage a child for taking uh, radiographs? So behavior management techniques for obtaining radiographs is first you need to desensitize the child using tell show do technique. So you need to basically show the child the radiograph, tell him, talk to him, show to him how you're going to do and do the procedure. So uh, the child is positioned to gain the maximum cooperation uh, so the maximum cooperation is best obtained if the child is made to sit in the parent's lap uh, while taking the radiograph uh, that reduces the child's anxiety so but while take doing this you have to see that both the parent and the child is covered well with a lead apron so the parents resting uh, their arms around the child's upper body and the le legs are wrapped around the lower body of the child so here the parents are wrapping uh, with their arms uh, the upper, upper body of the child while with their legs the lower body of the child so uh, for obtaining first we take the least 
uh, a difficult radiograph that is for the anterior teeth and then we most move on to the posterior teeth which is a difficult to take radiographs so here in this um, for the anterior or posterior radiographs that we need to obtain we use a device for positioning in the oral cavity so for that uh, we use uh, a device positioning device called snap array so this snap array can be used uh, to position the film in the oral cavity of the uh, uh, patient and it uh, is secured in the mouth and if the child is uncooperative uh, then an additional um, uh, adult is needed for the uh, stabilization so the first adult what does he do he restrains the child um, uh, uh, while the second adult stabilizes the child's head with one hand with and with the other hand he stabilizes the uh, film in the oral cavity so this helps in obtaining a radiograph for a child who is uncooperative So if the second adult is not available, then you have to use something called as a papo's board, uh, board, or board or a mechanical restraining device. So, and if the child is not uh, still uncooperative, then uh, you have to manage the child pharmacologically, like here, in which the patient is given inhalation sedation uh, for taking or obtaining radiographs so a positioning device that is a snap array is used in patients who have the fear of swallowing the film uh, so uh, this positioning device is uh, uh, is the one in which the patient bites on it and uh, you can make the patient watch himself on a mirror and they will be assured that they will do they will not swallow the radiograph so if we are basically uh, avoiding the patient's fear of sol swallowing the uh, film next we have the desensitization technique so in the desensitization uh, is uh, defined as gradually exposing the child to new stimuli or experiences of increasing intensity so you're gradually increasing uh, or exposing the child to a more uh, the in increase with increasing intensity so in here initially you take uh, the radiograph of the anterior teeth which are easier to take compared to that of the posterior uh, uh, tooth radiograph uh, so here as we can see in this picture a lollipop is taken and uh, on which a radiographic film is uh, tied uh, with the help of a rubber band so this is called as a lollipop radiograph technique in which um, uh, so the patient is asked to put the lollipop and bite on it and this again helps in positioning the radiograph uh, in the patient's oral cavity so for procuring posterior radiographs uh, you can uh, make it more pleasant uh, by if uh, it is associated when with any pleasurable taste if the child's like the taste so this can be done by applying uh, a bubble gum paste uh, on the uh, film or applying a uh, toothpaste on the film uh, so this again helps in uh, uh, helps in children who have ex uh, the gag reflex who have exaggerated gag reflex so uh, this can be controlled by diverting their uh, uh, attention towards the taste rather than their uh, uh, gagging and this also helps in concentrating on something other than the procedure on which it has been done so uh, this is another technique of uh, procuring or obtaining radiographs from the posterior uh, of the posterior tooth so either by applying a bubble gum uh, flavored uh, on the film or applying a toothpaste on the film a film will help in uh, procuring the radiographs so the patient's distraction can also be done by uh, 
the patient can be asked to hum a song or uh, can also be distracted by asking the patient to raise a leg uh, or to count uh, or to look at themselves in the mirror this again helps in obtaining the radiograph of the uh, of the oral cavity and the, uh, if the patient is not very cooperative the patient's palate can be sprayed with a topical anesthetic and this will help us in obtaining a, a radiograph uh, use of nitrous oxide analgesia again uh, again help us in uh, obtaining a uh, radiograph uh, the another alternative method is to place the film on uh, between the teeth uh, between the tooth and the cheek and exposing the film from the opposite side of the jaw this again helps in obtaining the uh, uh, radiograph in the patient so what are the modifications for infants that we can do to obtain a, a, a radiograph for a child under three years of age uh, the mother or the parent who is come with the child uh, will hold the child and the film uh, so the child's head is cradled against the parent's shoulder and the parent's left arm or the other arm should restrain the child's body and right arm should position and hold the film so with one hand they are restraining the child body and with the other hand they are holding the film so this again helps in obtaining a radiograph in child children who are uncooperative or children who are unable to understand the need for the radiograph and uh, for this we use a type 0 film um, for children so uh, now moving on to the indications of uh, uh, radiograph why do we need or uh, when it is indicated for radiographs is uh, if there's trauma to the teeth and supporting structures and to find out if there is any structures which are uh, uh, internally involved uh, uh, that again helps us uh, especially in cases where there is an avulsion or intrusion of the tooth or there is uh, um, there is uh, support um, break or uh, support uh, supporting tissues um, trauma then again we take radiographs uh, history of pain if the patient is giving any history of pain to uh, know the cause for the pain we again need radiographs uh, then any developmental or acquired dental anomalies uh, while treatment planning for orthodontic treatment so prior to orthodontic treatment we need to take the uh, uh, radiographs then any prior to any surgery uh, we need to obtain radiographs um, and uh, to uh, to evaluate the healing process after uh, any post op uh, any procedure so post operative uh, radiographs need to be taken after, uh, to evaluate the healing process so any periodontal or endodontic treatment if the patient has undergone to for that also we need radiograph any unexplained tooth mobility of the permanent tooth we need to uh, or the primary teeth we need to uh, take a radiograph to check for the reason behind the mobility any evidence of foreign objects if uh, uh, th there is then again radiographs help us uh, in uh, finding uh, if there is any foreign objects which is there in the oral cavity or anywhere and then pain or dysfunction of the temporomandibular joint if there is any facial asymmetry the reason for the facial asymmetry can be obtained um, uh, using a uh, radiograph any unexplained sensitivity uh, to the teeth if there's unusual eruption or spacing or migration of the teeth again we need a radiograph to for the diagnosis and unusual tooth morphology calcification or color any unexplained absence of uh, teeth also uh, we need radiographs to see if the tooth bud is present or it's uh, uh, not present uh, or missing So, what are the positive uh, clinical signs or symptoms? So, when is the uh, um, radiograph indicated? Uh, in which signs and symptoms is the radiograph indicated? Uh, in patients with deep carious lesions. So, if a patient has a deep carious lesions, to check uh, how much is the extension of the carious lesion, we need to uh, take radiographs. And if the patient comes with a swelling, 
uh, we need to obtain take the radiographs to check check uh, or uh, the reason for the swelling uh, is it tooth related or uh, is it um, anything else so any evidence of dental of facial trauma so uh, if there is a evidence of uh, um, dental tra trauma or the facial trauma uh, this again helps in evaluation of the extent of trauma uh, the mobility of teeth uh, if it is associated with any sinus tract or fistula if it is present um, if clinically suspected sinus pathology if there is a sinus pathology associated then again radiographs are indicated uh, in growth abnormalities uh, oral involvement in known or sus suspected systemic diseases any clinical evidence of periodontal disease and large or deep restorations so all in all these you need uh, the radiographs which are indicated so now moving on to the steps for taking radiograph so uh, the basic steps of taking a radiograph is to first ready the machine the x-ray machine so and uh, you need to introduce the child to the uh, radiographic room and the um, and the x-ray machine so uh, use the tell show do technique in which you introduce the uh, x-ray machine as the camera and the film that is placed in the mouth uh, on the oral cavity as the picture that will be taken in that and then we can uh, see it later uh, position the patient upright on the chair and if the child is uh, a uh, child or the patient is wearing any glasses or any other appliances that needs to be removed uh, the patient is then covered with a lead apron and uh, the x-ray machine is adjusted according to the tooth uh, uh, and the exposure time and uh, based on the um, requirement then the tube head is positioned appropriately to the tooth of interest and then uh, the wash your hands uh, then uh, use the practice the holder technique without receptor and instruct the child to close the mouth and bite on the bite piece so here we are asking um, you're using the holder so and we uh, need to instruct the child to bite on the bite piece and um, position the film on the holding device and uh, position film near the tooth to be examined so we, you need to position the film close to the tooth that needs to be examined and position the x-ray for proper uh, angulation and you then expose the film and obtain the radiograph so some special features is uh, slightly dampen the film uh, place the film first in a horizontal position and then rotate in the vertical position so when you're placing in the patient's uh, uh, oral cavity uh, first take the film in the horizontal position and then rotate vertically uh, in the vertical plane uh, uh, in the position it is required to be placed and slightly dampen the film this helps in uh, if, uh, basically if you put a dry um, film in the patient's oral cavity uh, it will irritate the oral mucosa so slightly dampen the film uh, then curve the film to avo avoid any impingement of the soft tissue so uh, you need to curve but avoid any sharp bends in the film so curve the film to avoid the any impingement into the soft tissues um, use topical anesthetics or psychological techniques to avoid gag reflex so if the child uh, uh, is having gag reflex so either you use a topical anesthetics uh, or you you can use the psychological techniques psychological techniques uh, is the distraction method that is you need to distract the child away from the uh, um, uh, the radiographs that is taken so you can ask him to count numbers or to lift uh, on his fingers or lift his leg uh, uh, one of the leg and uh, counting can be done or he can even hum uh, a song so this again will help in uh, taking radiograph uh, or obtaining a radiograph in a child who has a uh, gag reflex and uh, allow child to sit over uh, 
uh, the parent so the parent is also uh, made to sit with the child for obtaining a radiograph but we need to see that uh, lead apron is given to both the parent and the child this is a table based on the patient's requirement for radiograph so patient age and dental developmental stage and the type of encounter so if it is a new patient it is a recall patient and if the child or if the patient is uh, with primary dentition with mixed dentition permanent dentition adult or which uh, who is partially edentulous and an edentulous patient so if we have a new patient uh, uh, with primary dentition and who comes to you prior to the eruption of the permanent tooth uh, so you need to take in uh, radiographs uh, that are periopical and occlusal radiographs um, that can be bite wings can also be taken and uh, uh, for the proximal region and if the child has open um, proximal contacts then there is no need for radiographic examination at this time because you will be able to visualize uh, in the proximal region so if a child who is who comes to you in the uh, in the mixed dentition phase and uh, he is a new patient then uh, radiographic examination needs to be done consisting of posterior bite wing radiographs with a panoramic examination or posterior bite wings with periapical images can be obtained for a, a an adolescent uh, patient with uh, like a permanent dentition uh, or a uh, adult with partially edentulous then uh, we need to take posterior bite wings with panoramic examination that need to do or individual periapical images can be obtained uh, to uh, see for any uh, dental diseases so a patient who is edentulous uh, then uh, in which you individualized basically you don't have to take the complete oral uh, radiograph you just need to take individual radiographs based on the clinical signs and symptoms if, and if you have a recall patient uh, with clinical caries or at increased risk of caries for a child with primary uh, mix and permanent dentition so you need to take posterior bite wing uh, radiographs uh, that needs to be obtained at 6 to 12 months interval and if proximal surface cannot be examined uh, visually uh, or with a probe for a patient who is adult and partially edentulous posterior bite wing radiograph can be taken at 6 to 18 months interval and for an adult who is edentulous it's uh, they, it's not applicable so a child uh, who is uh, a patient who comes with a recall with no clinical caries and not increased risk of caries uh, so for a child with primary and mixed dentition posterior bite wing uh, examination can be done at 12 to 24 months uh, and if the proximal surface cannot be visualized uh, with a probe uh, for a permanent dentition posterior bite wing needs to be taken at 18 to 36 months interval for an adult with partially edentulous mouth um, posterior bite wings that need to be taken at 24 to 36 months interval and for an adult edentulous patient it is not applicable so these are the criterias for which uh, in which we have to uh, take or uh, obtain uh, radiographic imaging imaging of the patients based on the uh, oral uh, if there's any oral disease based on the risk carries risk status of the patient So now moving on to the impression making for children with gag reflex. So one of the major concern uh, in uh, pediatric dentistry or in adults also is the gag reflex. So how do we manage such patient where we need to take an impression? So um, uh, you need to give instruction to the parents that uh, before or prior to the appointment, the child should be not given any food or drink uh, prior to any appointment and he should be empty stomach uh, the material for the impression is kept ready in order to avoid looking for it so uh, basically in uh, impression making for a child uh, it has to be 
done in the shortest of duration and it needs to be fast uh, so you need to keep all the things that are required for the impression making uh, e easily accessible and um, uh, so to avoid the anxiety of the child um, uh, so a fast setting alginate impression can be used instead of a slow setting uh, um, uh, alginate impression and it is um, uh, advisable to give uh, appointments to the patient uh, in the morning itself uh, a child who is seated on the chair in a vertical position and the assistant should tilt the chair back about 60 degrees so that both the mandibular and the maxillary impressions can be made so here how do you position the uh, child the child is seated upright and uh, the chair is tilted to 60 degrees where uh, you can uh, take the impressions of both the maxillary and mandibular uh, uh, arches in the same position so the dentist positions uh, for both mandibular and maxillary impressions should be to the side and slightly behind the patient's head uh, here encircle the child's head with the left arm and control the head and impression tray during the uh, procedure so this is how we have uh, what we have discussed before that uh, in the first picture the child is seated uh, in a chair that is tilted back f about 60 degrees and this helps us in obtaining radiograph for both the maxillary and the mandibular uh, arches and then the patient is behind the at the side of the uh, child but behind uh, and this helps in obtaining the impressions for both maxillary and mandibular and you can even note that the, in the second picture the uh, the uh, dentist hand is encircled around the head of the uh, head of the child so during the inser tray insertion the child should breathe forcefully through his nose and uh, the child is basically uh, instructed to breathe through the uh, nose instead through the mouth and uh, the child needs to uh, breathe forcefully through the nose and the assistant is asked to hold the mixing bowl uh, below the uh, chin of the uh, child so the, uh, to uh, if uh, the child vomits or any saliva or uh, extra impression material that is discharged from the uh, patient's mouth that can be collected in the uh, mixing bowl So the best way of obtaining a radiograph or any form of dental treatment that can be done on a uh, child patient is by distraction. So distraction is used to divert the child's attention during the impression making. Uh, the alginate um, and you need to tell uh, the patient what you are planning to do. So the mixed alginate can be described as a, a pudding to the patient or a mashed potato or an ice cream and the impression should be made first uh, because it is easiest to obtain so the mandibular impression is the one that is easiest to obtain and it should be uh, the one that should be uh, uh, obtained first uh, so at the end of uh, and the child should be complimented and informed about his good behavior so the very important part uh, that should be done by a dentist is the com you need to compliment the child and inform about his good behavior uh, so this also helps in um, the behavior management of the child in the subsequent appointments um, uh, basically you are doing a positive reinforcement to the child so uh, here we come to the end of the lecture uh, so we here in this uh, lecture we have discussed about the treatment planning uh, the indications of radiograph where it is indicated and uh, referral writing is one of the important factor that needs to be considered and the impression making and how do we obtain radiograph in children uh, who cannot be cooperative at times uh, so we will put up questions in the google classroom so you'll need to uh, 
go through the lecture again and answer the few questions which will be put in the google classroom thank you for listening